A Letter from Scotland by Fiona Tinker Dear Little Witches, Attila the Bun sat just outside the fairy mound and cuddled into himself as the cold winds of winter blew across the tips of his ears. He was feeling glum, and this showed in his sweet little eyes. He almost looked as if he wanted to cry. Meg, the cat with half a tail, looked on anxiously. This was not like Attila at all. That rabbit was usually full of mischief, shenanigans, and nonsense. Meg was worried. What's wrong, Attila? Meg asked very gently. I miss my human, answered the rabbit softly. I know I'm a magical rabbit now, and I live in the other world with Angus Og and Brita and the rest of the tribes, but my human loves me, and I love her. I just miss her sometimes. Oh, Attila, <sighs> Meg sighed. Can't you just nip back into their world and visit for a while? <laughs> I don't know how, sobbed Attila. Showed me how. <laughs> Meg drew himself closer to his little rabbit friend. He really didn't know what to say. Where was Angus Og when you needed him for some god advice? Oh, that's right. Asleep for the winter and chasing swan women at the same time, depending on which story you fell into. Meg sighed. <sighs> Who could they ask for advice? The breath of the Kalok blew over the two friends, bringing with it the faint sound of her icy laughter. <laughs> you can ask me, she whispered on the wind. Meg looked at Attila, and Attila stared back. Ask the Kalok for help? She was the fierce old woman of winter in Scotland. She ruled the unseely court, the fairies of the dark half of the year. Everyone was terrified of upsetting her in case she froze them solid. She was hardship, and she was hunger, and sometimes she was a harsh lesson. But then Meg thought back through all the encounters with the Kalach that he and Attila had over the years. Meg had to admit she wasn't all bad. They'd had a lot of fun tricking her and the she-people of the fairy mound. The Kalok had taken it in good part. After all, neither he nor Attila were ice cube animals yet. Ask the Kalok? Meg looked again at Attila and saw how sad he really was. Meg knew he couldn't explain to the rabbit how cats managed to wander in and out between worlds. All he knew was that they just did. That wasn't going to help a rabbit learn to do the same. <sighs> Meg sighed. He was, in truth, really scared of the Kalok most of the time. But Attila was his friend. He had to be brave. Mother Kalok, he whispered, old woman of winter, please help Attila. He is missing someone he loves and doesn't know how to find his way back to visit. Meg closed his eyes, expecting an icy blast of winter to tell him off for daring to seek help. Instead, he felt a very cold hand smooth his fur, and a gentle voice said, I will do what I can. Suddenly there was an uproar. The wind howled. Leaves and straw and twigs danced. Dust and snow swirled. The unseely court, the winter fairies of Scotland, rose as one from the mound and screeched and howled and roared and yelled. There was thunder so loud, boom! It sounded as if all the gods in all the worlds were banging their tin dustbins along their garden paths at the same time. It was deafening. And in the middle of the chaos, a voice called, Horse and Haddock! Attila the bun and Meg, the cat with half a tail, found themselves lifted into the air towards a rider on a horse. Then they were gently placed on the saddle. 
They looked up into the face of the writer. Attila gulped. Well, I know what a horse is, he said. But what's a haddock? The writer gave an exaggerated sigh, as if he were truly fed up with folk asking him that question. <sighs> it's a hat, he said. A small hat. Always gets people that does. Meg, always curious, looked puzzled. Why are you shouting for a hat, big, small, or otherwise? The writer from the unseelie court looked at the cat. It's our magic words, he muttered. Means we can fly. They turn straw into horses for us to ride. Meg was about to argue about how ridiculous this sounded until he realized he was indeed riding on a magical horse made from a piece of straw, which may or may not have been wearing a small hat, and he was flying several hundred feet up in the air in the company of Attila, the unseelie court, and the Kalok. Maybe this was not the time to question it. Attila had his eyes screwed tight shut. Silly rabbit, he was missing all the adventure. Meg stared around curiously. Cats could climb high, but he'd never been this high before. He felt as if he were on top of the world. There was a soft, purplish glow ahead of them. Meg knew this was the veil between one world and the next. He'd crossed it often enough. Then, sss, a faint hissing noise as they passed from one reality to the other. Attila, he said, nudging the rabbit with his nose. Look. The unseely court circled for landing. Gracefully, despite all the noise, they came to rest in the garden of a house. A woman was tending a winter rose. She shivered as the air around her became much colder. Attila's eyes lit up with joy and he bounced over to the woman as fast as his little feet could take him. His human! What Attila couldn't see, but everyone else could, was the beautiful stream of golden light rushing from him to his human and flowing back again. As Attila reached her, she knelt down and the little rabbit jumped into her lap. Both rabbit and human nuzzled each other's noses as they talked softly. Meg felt a lump in his throat. This was his human, too, and, and he loved her, but he did rather take it for granted that he would be able to see her when it suited him. Usually around the time his belly told him it was empty, or there was a particularly annoying itch behind his ear in need of a scratch. And there is the love, sighed the voice of the Kalach, the heart of the spiral that never changes. I know this one, answered Meg, pleased not to be confused for once. The spiral dances the patterns of our world, of the land, the sea, the sky. Being born, moving on, and being born again. Love remains at the center of it. Nothing can change it. The Kalok looked at the cat in surprise. That's right, she said. You're not as daft as you look, are you? She chuckled and tickled Meg under the chin, a move Meg normally would have loved. But this scratch was cold. He shivered a little, hoping the old woman of winter didn't notice. Look, said the Kalok. The beautiful golden light painted the whole frozen world a glowing yellow. The ice and snow glinted and glittered. Nothing seemed to move. It's the solstice sun waiting to be reborn, sighed the Kalach. It is so beautiful, this promise of time to come. Even though it tells me my reign will soon be challenged by Angus Og and Brita, there is so much wonder in this light of love and life. Meg looked at the ancient goddess in surprise. Doesn't it bother you, he asked. You'll be banished back to Ben Nevis for half a year, and no one is really sorry to see you go. The Kalok stared at Meg. Meg gulped. You've really more brains that you let on, she mused. However, the story of the year has to happen in order, or it doesn't happen at all. And can you imagine what kind of world that could be? Meg gulped again. He could imagine, only too well. Nothing growing, no water flowing, no grasses to hunt mice in. 
Perhaps learning from the stories of the year and letting them tell their tales was sensible. Meanwhile, said the Kalok, Attila will have to return to the other world with us soon. Will you come too? Yes, replied Meg. I'll come back for a while with him to keep him company. And if you promise not to try and melt my toes with the gift of salt Angus Og gave you the last time you saw him, I may make you some bannocks. Meg gave a guilty start. How on earth did the Kalok know about that silly conversation he'd had with Attila, wondering if salt would melt the Kalok's feet? <laughs> it won't, cackled the Kalok. I'm too much of a winner for that. But I tell you what use you could put your salt towards. Bannocks, said Meg quickly. Bannocks indeed, said the Kalok. Always tastes better made with some salt, don't you think? With that, the old woman of winter and Meg, the cat with half a tail, settled down to wait for Attila the bun to finish his visit with his human. Around them, the world glowed with the peace of the solstice as it held its breath waiting on the newborn sun. Peace of the solstice to all, said Meg, to the world in general. Then he added very quietly, Thank you, Kalok. I love you for what you did for Attila. I know, answered the ancient goddess, the Kalok, the mother of all the gods of Scotland. Meg didn't believe he could feel any happier. The Kalok was not near as scary as he thought. Not when you treated Winter with respect. Attila was with his human, and under the bush by the fairy mound back in the other world, there was a small stash of salt that was waiting to become part of a bannock for him. Till the next time, Fiona Tinker. <laughs>